Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 156 for the manual of percutaneous coronary interventions. This is a case of a large thrombus in a patient who presented with a STEMI. The patient was an 80-year-old gentleman who came with an inferior ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, have fairly large ST segment elevation in the inferior leads, as well as from lead V3 through V6, and a reciprocal ST segment depression in the lateral leads. So the patient came to the cath lab. These are the baseline hemodynamics, systolic pressure of 160, significant ST segment changes. And this is the baseline angiogram of the left coronary system that was done using right radial axis. Engagement was actually difficult. We had some difficulty advancing the catheters through the subclavian because of tortuosity, but we were able to successfully engage and found no significant lesions. There's some moderate disease into the LAD. But this is the right coronary artery, and the right coronary is a large vessel, which explains the very significant ST segment elevation and is occluded with um, likely a large thrombus. So what to do next? The next step is to restore undergrade flow. But we had a lot of difficulty advancing guide catheters and engaging the right coronary artery. We tried AL1 that kinked and I carry right that kinked and that we were unable to engage despite using a guide extension as well. So eventually we switched to femoral axis and we tried to engage with uh, another uh, six French JR4 guide but uh, we also had a fairly poor support, and part of the problem was because of iliac tortuosity. So we changed to a 7 French JR4. We upgraded the sheath to a 7 French sheath that went 45 centimeters up. And after doing that, we had much better support, and we were able to advance a Sion Black guide wire through the proximal right coronary artery all the way into the distal vessel. Doing that uh, restored some undergraded blood flow, and it's now clear that there is a large uh, filling defect, so likely a large amount of thrombus. In cases like this, we don't want to balloon or stand before we remove some of the thrombus to reduce the risk of distal embolization. So given the large size of the thrombus, we used the penumbra device and did multiple passes uh, aspirating with the penumbra catheter. And what this did is actually this likely dislodged this very large thrombus that is now moved a little bit further down, fortunately not all the way distally, but we now have this very large filling defect and intracoronary thrombus in the right coronary artery. This size of thrombus is unlikely to be removed by using the penumbra catheter alone. So what we did is we used a six French guide extension, which we had already from the attempts to engage radially and then connected uh, the side arm of the Y connector of the TUI to the penumbra pump. So we did uh, passes with uh, the guide extension back and forth into the right coronary artery, simultaneously aspirating using the penumbra pump through this guide extension. And although this results in a significant amount of blood loss, it is also much more effective, and actually we retrieved several large thrombi. After doing that, the vessel is now much better. We no longer see this large filling defect, although there is still some stenosis with black versus thrombus. As uh, it happens often with right coronary artery MIs, we did have significant hypotension and bradycardia. The blood pressure uh, went down to the 50s and 60s, and the patient was hypotensive. But then after giving atropine and dopamine, his heart rate and blood pressure increased. After the patient stabilized, we did intravascular ultrasound that shows distally a nice vessel about 4 millimeters in diameter. And as we come further up, there is some calcification, but not circumferential. And then there is significant plaque versus residual thrombus into the proximal to mid right coronary artery. So we decided at this point to go ahead and stand. We used a 4.0 by 26 millimeter drug diluting stand. But unfortunately, we now have slow flow. So most likely what happened is we had some residual thrombus that may have embolized distally, decreasing the distal flow. What to do? Two things, giving intracoronary 
antipatent agents, so we gave intracoronary epifibatide, and we also gave intracoronary nicardipine, and we gave those using the penumbra catheter so as to optimize the delivery inside the right coronary artery and minimize any backflow into the aorta. And fortunately, after doing that, there was restoration of TM3 flow into the right coronary artery. We did an intravascular ultrasound again, and it showed that the stand was um, well expanded. There was some additional room for potentially post-dilating the stand and making it even bigger. But uh, overall, the area was good, and we decided against doing additional post-dilatations because that could likely increase the risk of um, having another nori flow. And we still have relatively poor flow into the um, right posterior lateral branch. The hemodynamics were good. The EKG changes had significantly improved. Even though the blood pressure was lower, it was still okay at 100 systolic. So we closed the right femoral arteriotomy, and the patient had an uneventful uh, post-procedural course. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, in cases of large thrombus burden, it is best to try to remove the thrombus before doing stenting or ballooning to minimize the risk of distal embolization. How to deal with large thrombus? In this case, we tried the penumbra catheter and aspirated, but the thrombus was too large. So what we did is we used a guide extension that was advanced down the vessel and aspirated through the side arm of the TUI, removing a large amount of blood, but also significantly reducing the size of the thrombus in right inside the coronary artery. We then stented and had, unfortunately, no reflow, but this improved after giving glycoprotein 2B3 inhibitor intracoronary, epifibatide, and uh, nicardipine as vasodilator. And retrospectively, what we could have done is to also have placed a filter before doing the thrombectomy that might have captured any large pieces of thrombus that uh, potentially embolized uh, during the thrombectomy. And finally, in cases of STEMI, when there is a large thrombus, it is best to avoid aggressive post-dilatation of stents to minimize the risk of recurrent distal embolization. Thank you.